The Event Tech Podcast is brought to you by Event Hero. All of the event management software features in the world are worthless if they don't easily integrate with your registration system and other systems you need to make your event happen the way you want it to. Stop making superhuman effort and start using your superpowers. Event Hero provides features you need, like check-ins, lead retrieval, analytics, and alerts, all seamlessly integrated with your favorite registration system and other back-end tools. To learn more and to get started, visit eventhero.io. Welcome to the Event Tech Podcast. I'm John Federico, your host and executive producer, which means that I press the record button and find the great guests. Before we get to this week's guest, I want to remind everyone, uh, if you're listening to us, you probably found us on iTunes. We'd really appreciate it if you could head on over to iTunes, give us a couple of stars, maybe a review. We'd really appreciate it. It helps get the word out about the show and helps us to continue to educate event planners on how to use all types of event tech. Of course, you can also find us on Stitcher and SoundCloud. And if you really want to watch Talking Heads, head on over to YouTube. Uh, you can find us there, me and my guests, just talking at you in the camera. Uh, and there's waving to us right now from a conference room in New York City is Mr. Ben Hinman, CEO and co-founder of Splash. Welcome, Ben. Hi, John. Thank you for having me. Great to be here. Thank you. And uh, I know we're we've been having some bandwidth problems, so uh, I know it feels like we've said hello and done the intro 17 times. It was 17 only times. It, this is your best take yet, though, John. <laughs> That's, I, I needed that. Thank you. I appreciate that. So, Ben, um, we spoke, the first time we spoke was at uh, the Planner Tech Conference, now called uh, Taxi Talk Live, uh, in New York City. And we talked about the seven touch points of meeting design. Did I get it right this time? Event design, experience Event design. design, but you nailed it. Seven touch points. Seven touch points, which was a great, uh, a great discussion. I get comments on it all the time. Uh, and actually, I, you know, I don't know about you, but I, I keep the stats running on our website to see what people are hitting all the time in a separate window. And people are constantly hitting that interview. Awesome. Uh, but we never got a chance to talk about Splash, what it is, what's new, and why our, uh, our listeners uh, should consider it. So let's start there. What is Splash? And, uh, you know, and, and tell us, by the way, what the, real, what the right URL is while we're on the subject. Awesome. So we're at SplashThat.com. And so we're working on buying that, that very expensive uh, five-letter, six-letter domain. But we'll get back to you on that. So for the time being, not Splash This, but Splash That. Um, and actually, you know, it's interesting. Actually, it's not a bad place to start because um, our domain doesn't matter. Uh, at the end of the day, uh, our platform is for brands. It's for you. And uh, so most of our favorite users actually white label or put uh, our stuff on their own domains. Um, and so that's a nice way to start off talking about Splash. Splash is um, a, an event planning management tool. Uh, it's comprehensive. It is from front to back, start to finish, A to Z, um, every single thing that an event planner needs to throw an event um, when it comes to their online presence. And the most important part is it's for brands, but brands come in all sizes, as we, as we found out, John. Um, a brand can be a, a small creative agency in Long Island. It can be a Fortune 500 a company in St. Louis. It can be a tech startup in San Francisco. No matter what, that's a brand. Um, and what we found is that brands have very different needs than, let's call it, uh, sometimes conferences or ticketed events or personal events. Um, a brand, big or small, um, often focuses on beauty. They focus on reach. They focus on capturing the attention of humans and keeping the attention of, of the humans that they find most important. Um, and so to be sure, what's, what Splash is, it can be used for all sorts of types of events. Our sweet spot is making sure that brands look awesome online. That's what we do, John. Wow. It sounds like you've told this story before, maybe once no, or twice. No, first time, off the top of the head. What do you think? <laughs> Seems like a good idea, right? I should start oh, that awesome. And, you, and you're great. And you're always good with the, uh, with the uh, bullet points, which I like. So let's talk about those. So brands. I like how, how you define that. Um, uh, but what's the difference between a brand, 
Yeah. You know, I mean, so really it's a brand in your mind is someone who wants to look good online. In a lot of ways, yeah. I mean, this is, I guess, the, the most important way to think about it. Um, a, a ticketed event is the, another type of event. Now, don't get me wrong. Brands can often throw events that involve tickets. But what we're finding is, is that a ticketed event is one that's got a P&L associated with the event itself. You spend a certain amount of money, you make a certain amount of money, and you hope that the, uh, the, the former is lower than the latter, right? Um, that's what an event, that a ticketed event is. Now, a branded event, which is our specialty, is an event where the, the, uh, the event is the best way to be in touch, to engage a certain amount of people. Um, now, don't get me wrong. Sometimes you got to sell tickets to your event, right? Sometimes you got to make money, right? Sometimes you got to do it. Um, but in the, the, as I guess I'm saying, it doesn't really matter to us how you're getting those people. If you're thinking about your brand in this event format, that's where we rock. And let me say one more quick thing. I've been finding that, so I'm an event planner by background. I was the director of events for Thrillist. I've thrown conferences and cocktail hours and mystery flyaways. That's, uh, I, I know events. And I've thrown ticketed events, conferences, personal events. You get it. Um, while the challenges of these events are often the exact same. So a ticketed events will share many of the same challenges as a branded event. The goals are often the distinction. The goals for a branded event are often have to do with people. It has to do with getting the right people in the room, capturing their attention and communicating a message. And really, uh, in my mind, that's why we spend so much time focusing on the design and the look of our pages and the ability to allow people to customize them. Because our hypothesis here at Splash is that design is the most concise and effective way to communicate a message. And so if you're trying to communicate a message, we think looking pretty is one easy way to get started. Can't argue with that, actually. I mean, there, there are some people who, who would say that, well, you know, I'll just use such and such a platform, and who cares what the registration page looks like? They all look the same. But they don't have to. Um, I, I always find it really I, – I, what's the word? Refreshing? There you go. Splash, refreshing, get that. Uh, Wonderful. Yes. But whenever I do register for an event uh, that uses Splash, it is, it, it's, it's refreshing. Uh, wait, um, well, I won't call it names because who knows. But the, I registered for an event here in New York that, that uses Splash. And when I got to the registration page, I was like, oh, that's cool. That's really cool. And it, it, oh. wasn't, it wasn't just the same old thing. Now, again, some people don't care. But I, I happen to, this particular customer of ours, I, I know them. Actually, they're a customer of ours. Uh, and they care. It's very important to them. And you could see that in, even in just something as, as what someone would consider mundane as their registration platform. Great. I'm glad so, you did that. Thank you, John. Absolutely. It's been exciting. You know, uh, specifically, you know, just to build on that, and I would argue that everyone should be using this concept in really both their online event and the offline event. We've been, become obsessed with the concept around surprise. Um, we've actually been taking classes in surprise. Um, the thinking, and we, we've been in, engaging in a surpriseology class. And as they say in the surpriseology, a surprise makes anything blank er. So if you're, if it's a sad surprise, it's going to be sadder. If it's a scary surprise, it'll be scarier that it's a surprise. And so, and I, I try to incorporate this into my actual uh, physical event design through the entrance and the DJ and. Uh, the photo booth, whatever it might be. What we've been trying to accomplish here at Splash is to get that surprise, and as you put it, refreshing is what we try to accomplish, um, into the platform itself. And so, yeah, uh, that's how we're thinking about it. Uh, surprise and delight, as we say. Yes, I, I would say that's, that, that would definitely describe uh, my experience. But awesome. So were you, so were you joking about the classes and surprise? Come on. I kid you not, man. You should check it out. It's called Surprise Industries. I found this woman. Her name is Tanya Luna. I know Tanya. Yes. Oh, you got to get her on the show. I mean, <laughs> what an awesome person. So we, we engaged. We did a full offsite around the concept of surprise. And we, we did a couple different types of surprises. And I'm telling you, when you're thinking about design, it's a really interesting place to start. And so, yeah, that's, that's how we think about stuff here. All right, I will, I'll, definitely, I'll definitely have to reach out to her. It's funny, because when I got her originally, uh, she, there was an, she sent me an email, and her signature line said, surprise consultant. And I'm yeah. like, what does that mean? And exactly. then we talk. Yeah, she's, she's great. She's great. So you also mentioned a few other things, too, though. You mentioned um, reach. 
sure. as, as something that was very important to the to the brands that use your product. And you also mentioned human attention. So yeah. human attention, I, I mean, obviously surprise plays into that. Um, but what about the reach part? So how does Splash help with, with reach? Yeah, great question. Um, well, you know, I think we can break it into two sections, right? There's our technical capabilities, right? So we integrate per, uh, perfectly well with every single social media. We allow you to capture social media, display it on the page, um, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. You can actually create galleries very easily right within our product from those and actually uh, track the social reach of your existing uh, hashtags. Um, that's right within the product. Um, it's got an email sending tool. It's got tracking links. So as you publish these pages out, you know, on different publishers or on different listing sites or wherever, or as your, your community shares them out, you're able to track that stuff. So I say the first thing to say when we talk about reach is, how are you keeping track of that reach? That's something that we, we spend a lot of time on from a technical standpoint. It's very well built within the product. That's number one. But I'll tell you, John, we can talk about that all day long. And I think you and I both know that when it comes to an event, People are jaded, people don't care, it's tough. Well, event planners, it's tough to look awesome. I have data, I have empirical data that I've been working on this for years and years that has proven this very simple concept that I think we all know, but that this is what we've tried to embody is, if you make your attendees look awesome, they are going to share it on your behalf. So I actually use that same concept when we, uh, with what we do for event planners. Our thesis has been, if we make event planners look awesome, they'll share these pages on our behalf, which has worked. We've been growing virally. Uh, every 20 times somebody sees a, a page, they create their own, which is pretty great for us. But that same concept is very easily applicable to the event pages themselves. And so the types of things that we put together to allow people to make their attendees look awesome. And again, making them look awesome is the game. It's not about how you look awesome, it's how they look awesome. The ways that we help you do that is by featuring their photos on the page, by calling out a host committee, by creating even, it's very easy to duplicate pages and create uh, specific personalized pages for even each of the members of your host committee. Um, moreover, capturing their photos and throwing them on the page, by calling them out, um, by showcasing your artists, uh, or musicians work on the page via their SoundCloud or YouTube. By finding ways to highlight your attendees on the page, you can actually make them want to share it on your behalf. And I'm telling you, man, we see when people do that well, uh, it is exponential growth. One more quick thing when we talk about reach. We are seeing a 600% uptick in uh, page views when people create photo galleries, post event, and send that thank you reminder email, thank you email after the event. And better than that, if we, and it almost always happens within one or two days after the event. If you wait a week, you don't see the same uptick. But if you get that up the next day, and look, we all know this, but we're all tired. It was an awesome event. I want to go to sleep. What we've been working on doing here at Splash is creating the most frictionless process for you to capture photos, to create that gallery, to send out that, that thank you reminder, that thank you email the day after the event quickly, because that's where you're gonna capture those people's attention. And so very small tools within the product that'll help you do that. As I mentioned, you can capture anything you want on our app via Instagram or Twitter and throw it out on the page. Or we've got a drop site that you can send to your photographer and those photos will be sent to you. You can approve them and those can go directly on the page or you can upload your own photos. We have an email sending tool that allows you to click one button, thank all the attendees. It's a beautiful little template that allows you to push that out. You can customize that. And yeah, man, uh, when people do that, the reach goes through the roof. And that's the game. The game, I think we talked about it on the last show. We call it the camp curve. Did you go to camp, John? I didn't. <laughs> all right. Well, it, it, those are the people who are listening who went to camp. They know this, the camp curve because the camp curve is something that you talk about all year. You think about it, you're psyched about camp, you come home, you tell all your friends about camp, that camp curve, that's the game, man. If you can get people talking about your event after it and keep it going and keep engaging them, uh, the type of reach you're going to see is in So that, that's, what, that's the game we're playing. That's what we're working on. Well, now that I understand the camp curve, I didn't go to camp, but my son does. And, uh, and yeah, we, he talks about camp all year long. We're having our... You know, he's in December. He's having you know his reunion for the for the summer, and then he goes back in July. Yeah, yeah. So I, I totally get it now. Awesome. And I got to uh, give props to David Adler from Bizfash. He told me about that camp curve, and we've been we've turned that into ours. So so I have to I have to footnote that, David. I appreciate that idea. All right. 
uh, the camp curve. I love that. Thank you. And thank David. And y- you know, it's funny, Ben, you, you're, uh, you guys are all about design. I shouldn't say all about design, but in other words, like design yeah. is very important. Um, but you're, whenever I talk to you, you're always about the data. You guys are like, you're like event scientists. You're always keeping track awesome. of, uh, of this information. So I love that, that balance and that juxtaposition. It's just, you know, it's, it looks great, but there's also, you know, the data behind it. Which awesome. Is, which and is check great. out uh, my blog. It's funny you say that. We call ourselves party scientists here. Okay, that's, there you go. That's, that's my blog. Uh, and exactly, man, it's, it's both, right? It's an art and a science, and I appreciate that. I'm glad you like it. Thanks. Absolutely. Well, and to be honest, I didn't know about the blog, so that was totally from the Perfect. heart. Perfect. I like that. I like that. Beautiful. All right. So, so I see what you mean about reach and using your technical capabilities and, and obviously about the design and making things viral and making people want to share. All of that is really important. Um, so let's, let's, get down to, let's get down to business here. Yeah. I, I'm, I, I, I'm a brand. And I want to have an, uh, an amazing experience. I want to reach the right customers. I, w- I want to get them there. Maybe I'm going to charge something to yeah. offset costs, okay. or make, or, right? Whatever it is. Yeah. Um, what do I do? How do I get started? It sounds yeah. like design. I mean, when I hear design, design costs money, you know, if it I'm does. a designer. So what, what do, how do we get started then? You know, it's a really interesting thing you just said. So, all right, well, l- l- let's, say, let's say, I'm going to say it a couple different ways, and it depends which direction you're coming from. I have done the best way, the best job that I possibly can to create a platform that allows anybody to sign up for free, and that's what you can do. You can go to splashthat.com right now, sign up for free, and create an event, and it'll look pretty darn awesome. And you can get started. We have hundreds of thousands of event planners, truly. So now we're just crossing over around 200,000 event planners who have done just that. They've joined up and created a page. Um, it takes about two minutes. You customize the colors to look like your own. You customize the font combination to look like your own. You customize the header image and all the speaker section, and it's super easy. You drop, drag and drop all over the page. Um, it automatically creates an email, et cetera. So you can get going, and the hope is that you can fly through the system without me. But I'll tell you this, John, and I hear you. It costs money to get a designer, but I'm a fan of designers. I'm a believer in that a little bit of extra design goes a long way. This is, look, as I said, I've tried my best to create a DIY product, but I see the best pages, the pages that rock, the pages that make people RSVP, that sell tickets, have used about an hour's worth of a designer's time. And I think we've gotten to that point at this point, where if you get a designer to create a color theme, a color combination that works for you, if you get a designer to choose a font combination for you, and you get them to create a cool little logo for your event, our, our platform allows them to edit that as, as, as easy as Photoshop. I mean, it is just like, not, and you know what? Way easier than Photoshop. You can just <laughs> drop that. I was going to say, thank God. Then, okay. Well, look, we've allowed the flexibility of Photoshop in our most recent builder mode product. If, you actually, if you're listening and you do have a designer, Check out Builder Mode in Splash, but Designer Mode is another game that I can use, and I, I don't know how to use Photoshop. And you can just drop things on the page, make them look awesome. And I'll just say that to, like, if you're a real pro, this is what I would do. I would go on Dribble, and that's D-R-I-B-B-B-L-E, so it's three Bs. I would sign up for their $20 a year searching platform that allows you to target designers in your area. Or there are two other platforms you can check out. There's Behance, that's B-E-H-A-N-C-E dot com, or Hired, H-I-R-E-D dot com. So those are three, Dribble, Behance, and Hired. I would put a search out for a designer. i buy them for two hours, and that's all you need. And I would really hone your brand, and then I would start the Splash platform. Again, John, we love our free users, and you can jump on, and you can create some really awesome looking stuff using our current templates. But I'm a fan. I'm a fan of really getting your, your, your brand right with a designer. Um, and I think, look, if, if you're taking your brand seriously, you know, that's, that's what it takes. Does that answer your question, John? Is that what you're looking for? Yeah. I, I mean, I, I guess I was just, it was a leading question. <laughs> Fair enough, man. But, but uh, you know, I, I, I really, you, you responded exactly the way I wanted you to. So, uh, because I, I, there are too many people, and even some of our own customers, uh, you know, God bless them where, uh, you know, they expect to just upload any image and it's going to work. And, and it's like, and then they, then it's like, well, you know, it doesn't look right because the proportions aren't right. Well, yeah, it, exactly. Here are the specs and we could even, you know, arrange, we can hook you up with a designer. Uh, and, and so, but people don't spend the time to, to really, you know, they don't put design 
at the, higher up on the list. Yeah. Yeah, man. And, and look, again, man, I, we've created this thing so that you can't screw it up. That's our job. I'll give you a quick example. You click one button, you, you upload a bunch of sponsor logos, we're gonna make sure they're the same height and proportion. We're gonna make sure that there's a, they're, they're the correct you know, dimensions around it. You can make them a circle shape or a square shape or a rectangle shape, but we're gonna make it so they're all consistent because that's great design. We're gonna choose color combinations that work for you. But look, you know, just as you said, uh, it's almost a little more time. It's like saying, hey, I'm gonna put you in a kitchen with a ton of really good uh, ingredients. All right, go. If you're not a chef, you might not know what to do next. Um, that's kind of that, that's the uphill battle that we're fighting. So I think point made, right? A little bit of extra design time goes a long way. But hey, man, I, you know I challenge our users. Jump in there. I bet you can create some beauty using Splash, just as it is. Yeah, and, and I didn't know about the design mode. Uh, oh yeah, man, go down. Yeah. If you've got a Photoshop designer, you, you get him access. Builder mode is crazy, dude. We had a designer in house create a beautiful, perfect, insanely robust theme for Spotify. It was one of our clients in 17 minutes without a line of code, and this was a mobile responsive theme. When I saw this go down, I was like, "Oh my gosh, we got it." We're, we're there. The mobile responsive part, that was the hard part. Because that's another piece that Splash really we've had, a, we, we've had to build in, which is how can you design for every single platform? You know, there's a very big difference between the print world that, of yesteryear and where we're dealing with now, where it's, it's screen agnostic. You know, you got people on all sorts of sizes. Uh, uh, yeah. We need to build some pretty robust tools to handle that kind of stuff. But man, oh man, when he cranked that out, John. 17 minutes. 17 minutes, you can't beat that. He no code, zero code. That was something. Anyway. So, so let's, okay. So, so I've, I've made, I've, I've taken the extra step. I've taken your advice. Now I've got a designer. So I go and I sign up, I create my, my free account. Uh, and now what? So now, now I guess I, yeah, so the next piece is to think about your lists. That's the way that, you know, from event planner to event planner, that's, that's the next big important move. The way that we try to think about lists. And so you can upload all of your content. You have a couple different options here. You know, you just created your own domain on Splash. So we give you for free a, you know, johnfrederico.splashthat.com or we give you anheuserbusch.splashthat.com. I'll tell you this, John, right now we're powering the calendar for budweiser.com. So just to give an example of how much we're willing to take our brand off of the page. We power the events for the NBA, for Twitter, for Facebook corporate, for Nike, for Mercedes-Benz. They need our brand off the page as well as they need it on their own URL. So that's just to just depict how easy it is for you to actually add it to your own URL and take our brand off. Um, at that point though, you want to start thinking about your list. And your list is, the way we try to help you think about your list is in two ways. Um, firstly, you can upload your contacts, it's easier to CSV. But we try to make you think about your list in relationship to you and to the people in your organization. Um, we do that both with tracking links and with creating smart lists for you. Because at that point, once you've got your brand all set, once you've got the content all set and ready to rock, it's all about getting the right people in the room. And I want to stress that word, the right people. And the right people is subjective, right? Is it the right people to you? Is it the right people to your boss? Is it the right people to your PR person? Uh, and so that, our game is to help you organize that in a way that makes it make sense. Um, and it, sorry, let me just say this point. Um, it can be lists for pull or lists for push. So you can create a list that will activate only when people are pulled into your system, when they only click the RSVP link or buy a ticket. Or you can create lists that help you uh, send it through social or send it through email. And, but again, the game is organizing humans, right? That's what we do as event planners. We gather humans together. And so that's the next step when you're creating your splash page. And yeah, that's we, we look, then you look to create your invitation and send it out through us. Or you can uh, just kind of spread the link as you will. Um, and we have some cool examples of how people have done that, um, both using third-party systems that work well with Splash. Um, our most favorite, give a little plug, we're just integrating with EVVNT. Check yes. those guys out. You know about them, John? Yeah, sure. Holy moly. So we just built them into our platform. So you can click one button and list on 300 different publishers' platforms and SEO the heck out of your Splash page. So I mean, really, at that point, it's all about push, but 
but depending on your event type, push to the right people, right? And, you know? yeah. Yes, and what I find really interesting about your platform it, it, compared to some others is that it's not about ticket sales, right? It's, it's not about cha-ching. It's not about taking a piece of the transaction. It's about doing what's right for, and I'm paraphrasing here based on my own uh, you know, uh, observation. I mean, just the, what, so how did I come to this? The fact that you can upload a CSV file. Like none of, these, uh, none of these other platforms even allow that because uploading a CSV file is just the antithesis of what they're all about, which is taking a piece of, trans of, of transactions. Right. So I could, I can totally see just from that simple thing alone, I can see that it's a, it's a different platform. If that Thanks, makes sense. Man. No, I really appreciate you saying that. Yeah, man. Look, uh, John, it sounds like you get it. And I imagine a lot of your readers do too. Uh, you know, another one like that, man, is like the reminder email. And I should say this out loud. We will never, ever, ever email your people, even to remind them about the event. Because if I'm an event planner, if anyone ever emails my list, I'm freaking out, man. Don't you dare email my list. Um, it's that same concept. This is your game. Now, look, we try to make it as easy as possible for you to send a reminder email. We try to give you beautiful templates and default copy and try to help you remember to send that thing. But I won't touch your list. And, and, and the people who work for me here, we've got a lot of tremendously good event planners in-house. And... It's that type of thinking that happens in our organization every single day that says, well, I'm an event planner. Would I like this? Do I need this? That's kind of our, that's our, that's our thought. And look, John, man, we're trying over here. We got a small team. We got about 30 people now. So we're growing. Not small, not so small anymore. Our goal is, you know, what if, what if event planners could actually have a platform that works for them exactly how they want it to work? That's what we're working on, man. It's, you know, uh, technology is not easy. That's that's usually what gets in the way. Uh, yeah. But but you know we're getting there. That's our that's our that's our mission. We we can relate to that here. Uh, we, you know we we someone said this yesterday and it was just so spot on. You know writing the software to perform the function function X whatever it is that's the easy part. Yeah. It's, all right. It's uh, and then you know John Wall who who works with us uh, who's great for the for the one liners. He's like, yep, it's e it's 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 much easier to build the road than it is the guardrails. And I was like, yes, exactly, yes, exactly. The road is easy. You got to get those yeah. guardrails right, or people. Oh, uh, and the uh, <laughs> and then and you also need the float on the edge of the cliff. Yes. So somebody falls off those guardrails. That's hard to build. Yeah, uh, yeah, airbags. Yeah, airbags. Right. The airbags, so, the whole game, the parachute. Yeah, yeah. Right. So. So that, yeah, I, I love, so, but again, it comes back to like, so what I, what I always try to get out of these discussions is, is this, is the, is, is this tool right for me? And it sounds to me like if you are running a conference, let's say you, you mentioned that earlier, right? As an example, yeah. if you're running a conference or you're running a ticketed event, it's not that Splash isn't good for you. It's just that, you know what? It might not be, you know, you have different needs if yeah. that's what you do. Uh, and, and that's what I want people to take away from this is like the types of things you can do with, with splash, uh, that you may or may not be able to do with others and why they should consider it as part of their, you know, their war chest. Sure. Sure. And that's perfectly put. And to be sure, John, we've got a lot of people doing a lot of different types of events from a bar mitzvah in Minnesota to a, you know, a huge conference at Sundance, right? They got a lot of them. We were powering all the events for Sundance as an example. Um, but yeah, I, I would say this, as you think about the many tools out there for your event registration and for promoting your event, um, if in your mind it matters to you that you look super duper awesome, that's where we rock, man. I'd also say scale. It's an interesting thing that many small events is something that nobody else can play against us in the same field. Uh, if you're managing macro level events, if you've got a whole campaign of events, say you're doing a seven city tour, you can create a hub, a, a program of event page very easily. And you can also duplicate these pages in a way that allows you to manage them very smart. So that's another way that I would say it's kind of small, awesome scale. That's where we run. Interesting. You know, we do a lot of those events as well. Hey, hey John, I'm telling you. Yeah, if you guys could just, you know, get that API ready, we we. Oh you know, man, we, we're almost there. We're almost there. Rocking I've heard it. you. I've heard you. We've been I'm rock. Good. We would be rocking it together. All right. I like that, John. All right, I'll take you up on that. <laughs> All right. So, so let's see. I've I've created my account. I found a designer. I've got the look and feel, the brand I want. 
I've got my, I'm organizing my people, my humans. Yep. Uh, I put them in the right buckets and I figured out how I'm going to reach them. Uh, so now the event's happening. People are showing up. Well, so we, you know, John, you just get one little thing, which is the week, be the week before, we call it the calm before the storm here. And we often refer to it as just, you know, for short, the calm. Because there's a moment as an event planner where you kind of did everything you can do, right? And now it's kind of gear up time. It's kind of like, all right, event's coming up. What do I do now? And, you know, the last things you can do is send out a please, you know, RCP again. But, you know, who knows how effective that'll be. But really your job at that point is to work on getting your team in shape, right? Because you got a day coming up that you gotta, gotta gear up for. And so that's really, you know, uh, where, where we've tried to help out there is uh, a couple ways. Um, the platform is a drop site, so you can start to share files with people. You can share notes and tasks with people. That's very easy to do on Splash. But also, of course, there's that epic check-in, the registration. And uh, so you can use our Splash app to, to check people in and to, uh, to, you know, to actually scan tickets. Um, as well as the Splash app is awesome in that you can take photos at the event and store those events you know, on the page or just with the page. So you can actually start to create your gallery on site. And so what I usually recommend people to do is kind of gear up on that shot list, which every event planner here knows all about. Start working through that shot list. You can send it around to your team and then unleash people with their Splash on site apps and start getting them to capture some of those photos along with your photographer. And that's another one. Make sure your photographer has your URL, so let's call it john.splashset.com, and then go slash upload. So every single splash page is a drop site. If you go slash upload, your photographer doesn't have to use Dropbox anymore. They can send them to you right through there, and then you can just push them live. Because I'll tell you, John, after the event, the last thing I want to do is chase down my photographer. I'm so sick of that. I, I, you know? I hear that. I hear that. And also, you know, as a media producer myself, sometimes it's, it's nice to do things in increments versus doing everything in batches. Right. Suddenly it's like, oh, here's your 32 gig SD card with, you know, with 600 photos. And it's like, really? I got to go through that? Whereas, whereas if I could just, you know, see a great photo, send it off and know that it's in the bucket and I can, I can deal with that's it. That's the game. That's it. Yep, exactly. And actually, that's something we should mention to your community. Uh, we're finding that there is significant drop off after 25 photos. So that's about the number you want to start finding. You want to hit 25 photos on your splash page to your community. Much more than that, you're not going to see them. You know, it's incremental returns on page views and on shares. Um, you know, frankly, I'm a believer. I'm simpler is better. I like two to three awesome photos. If you can encompass your full event in two to three photos, that's, that's art right there. And that's the, be that's the beauty, too, of, uh, you know, smartphones and, and digital photography, even DSLRs, is you can shoot all night, find those, you know, 10 photos, three photos, whatever they are, that just capture the moment and put them up, put the rest in storage in case you need them. And, yeah, you could just shoot. shoot, shoot. All right. It. So the calm before the storm. At the event, you have your on-site registration. You have you're prepping the team. You're prepping the photographer. Everybody knows what to do. Yep. So the, the event's a success. Now what? Now I've got my, I've got to get you all my got photos. To follow up. You got to get your photos up ASAP. Uh, you know what I try to do is I try to gear my team up for one day after the event. It's as if we're not even gearing up for the event. We're gearing up for the day after. And you know, when we talk about our timelines, that's how I break out my calendar. Is I put a big old star on the day after the event. So you got to push all the way through. You got to run through the finish line, you know? Um, and yeah, uh, your next step is to figure out how you're going to interact with your community after the event. Uh, in our last conversation about touch points, we had seven touch points. Two of them happen after the event is over. The uh, first one is an immediate follow-up. The first one is like a, hey, re-engage. Thanks for coming. Look, a lot of people send surveys. That's my least favorite thing to send. I hate it, man. And I so discourage people from doing it. People still do it on Splash. I'm cool with it. Obviously, and you know, frankly, you can use Splash to create a survey. It's a form. You can, it's right. essentially the same as Survey Monkey. We see people doing that all, all the time. I would recommend against it. I think that as an attendee, I like to, if anything, I like to answer one question. I'd be okay with answering one question. See if you can get them to engage, get them to share, give them a pre-populated tweet, give them an ability to give them, ask them to submit a photo to you. That's completely cool. Then the next stage is you want to wait about three to four days and you want to follow up again. 
it's surprising when people follow up with you a second time. I always find, I always like it. It's like, uh, hey, we're just, you know, we're thinking about you. It's so nice having you at the event. Now we can ask you for something. Now it's time to re-engage and try to, you know, engage that camp curve. Um, well, let, yeah. let, let's talk about that for a minute. I sure. mean, uh, so you could, the answer to this question could be everyone, but uh, really, what kind of events should be ha- engaging with that kind of follow-up? I mean, really, where, where does it benefit most? Sure. Um, when, you, when it matters to you what your attendees do is the answer to that. When, when you care about what your community does after the event. I'll give you an example. Who's one of our favorites on this one? We have a CPG brand. I'm not going to mention the brand because I don't think they want me to share their trade secrets. That's but a funny. tremendously big CPG brand uses us. And their job is to get people to buy booze, to buy liquor. And it's, term- it's great tasting. I drink it all the time. Uh, you know, obviously responsibly. Um, of course. Of course. Um, the way that they engage is they send a thank you reminder, a thank you email, excuse me, the day after the event with a cool photo. They usually just pick one photo they include it in the email. And then afterwards, they send, so that's the, the three days later, they send a drink recipe for their alcohol, and it's awesome. And it looks great. It's beautifully glossy. And it says, hey, you know, we'd love for you to try this recipe. And it allows you to download the recipe. It's got a link for a place you can buy their stuff and a link for a place for you to, to view or to share that recipe. And how awesome is that, right? They just engaged in a... In a two, you know, they hit them twice with two different emails, and then they gave them something and asked them for something. So this is the answer, the long-winded answer to your question is, when you want your attendees to do something, that's, what, that's, that's who we're talking about here. Now, if they've already sold them a ticket, you're right. You don't need much from them anymore. So, yeah, you know, don't bug them. But well, if, you need, if, you need them to, if you need them to re-engage with you and you want them to, and you want them to think about next year, that's a cool time to do it. That's a great example and, and really just good advice. Um, interestingly, so uh, last week I had on uh, Rick Calvert, uh, who's the, um, uh, he produces uh, the NMX, NMX, so New Media Expo, uh, Travel Bloggers Exchange. And, you know, we talked about very, this very thing, but in a different way. Um, because the, Rick's uh, attendees, his audience, are social media people, they as a company uh, have to know all about social media and engage with the folks in, on their territory. And so he said, he goes, we don't have a 365 day event. He, I don't think that that's accurate. He says, but we are in constant communication with our folks yeah. we, because we, you know, we're a part of this community just as much as they are. So, you know, they're, I guess what I'm saying is they unknowingly, they follow your advice, you know, after the event is over, it's just continuous, continuous. You know, they'll give people that breather right after their big event, and then they'll get back into it three, four days later, and sure. then continue. So, yeah, you should definitely connect with Rick. He, uh, he definitely believes uh, in that. As a matter of oh, fact, he, wow. believes in a, he believes in a lot of, uh, of the things. Uh, I love making introductions on air. Okay, you guys should talk. Um, no, but seriously, I, there are a lot of things, too, that, that I know that Rick believes in. Like, one thing is design, and another is, you know, uh, owning the list and, uh, and o- having control of the list and the communications and all that stuff. So, you guys had hit it off. All right. Great. Thanks, man. So, we'll make that happen. Um, so, where was I going with this? Drink recipe. Excellent. I love that. But, you know, again, Rick, Rick's events are a perfect example as well, right? You can have a conference and if you want people to engage, once that media is produced, let's say it's the virtual ticket, you know, you've captured some speakers or you've got photos from the event, et cetera, you know, same drill, engage with those people. It's different. Maybe the only thing you want them to do is share it, but, uh, you know, cause there may not be a purchase and there may not be any, any purchase opportunity after the fact, but at least you're engaging those folks and, and I can totally see how that works, you know, and actually who practices this? Uh, I could tell immediately after uh, Liz heard your talk at Planner Tech, she started practicing this. It was so obvious. Oh, to me. Maybe, oh. it's be- maybe it's because I interviewed you on the, on the seven principles, but uh, she totally does this. It's- I love it. Great, man. Great. Well, it's, and it's good stuff. I mean, I, look, I have no monopoly on that concept, but I have found it to be effective. Yeah. So I, w- I want to talk a little bit more, though, about Splash as a company. Sure. Uh, because... I know sometimes like we get very emotionally involved in our customers and we use the name, we use the phrase with the word we, right? Sure. Even though 
we are not doing anything. The customers are doing it. We're just helping them do it. Yeah. But, but you got, you have event planners on staff. You have designers on staff. Are any of those resources available to, to, uh, to your customers? It's interesting, man. Um, the answer is no. The answer is no. We've had just, you know, you could get, when you're building a software, and I don't have to tell you this, man, you know, you gotta, you gotta make sure to stay away from becoming an agency. Yeah. You know, you gotta, you know, it's it, for, for the greater good, you need to create tools that could be used by many as opposed to implementing over and over again. And that's been our, you know, that's, that's what we're trying to accomplish here. Um, look, you know, that said, uh, um, will my designers jump in if something is needed? For sure. Um, we love to give advice. Our support team is made up of event planners. And so um, if you do want to jump on a phone call with our team and you know, ask for that advice, that is readily available. But the way that I've been trying to build this, this company, and I think everyone here is on board with this, I know everyone's on board with it, is that we need to take our insights and make them usable by all. Um, it, look, you know, with limited resources, you got to choose your battles. And believe me, man, I would love to design up every single website for every single person. But I will say this, though. You know, we're doing a better job of, so we're bringing in designers once a week. New designers to create new themes every okay. single week. And they're, they're banging away on our product. They're, they're making sure that they can use our product. It's been fascinating. But the reason I bring it up in this context is that it's created a tremendous amount of diversity of design aesthetic. And that's been very exciting to see in the platform. And I do think that our users are gonna benefit from that in the same way that they would if those designers were doing exactly what they needed them to do at that very moment. Cause I hear you, man. You need it when you need it when you need it. And you know, I wish, but we're gonna get there. We're gonna get to a point where we're gonna be, it's gonna feel that hands on. Yeah, yeah. Well. Yeah, I, I told, we're totally in the same ballpark there. First of all, I love the fact that you're bringing designers in. That also means, by the way, just to touch on that, that means you keep adding to the number of themes oh, that, yeah. that people can have. So that's it's definitely so something cool. that people should know, right? Yeah. Um, so they can start off with a theme and maybe customize it, you know, or, or, but it's already been built by a professional designer that you guys have employed. So that's killer. Awesome. Yeah, man. We, we love it. It's a fun experience. And we got some right, cool designers. Today, so they do a talk at the end of their time and they, when they present their theme to the team. And they give us, you know, some sort of inspiration from a design standpoint. Today's was ask why and challenge the norms. I love that. Mm, I like that. Ask why but challenge the norms. Pretty cool. You are, you, you are quite the... Uh... By the way, you're quite the evangelist for the company, and I love that. I um, love it, man. Never heard. I like working here. But I can say, too, uh, even with our own company, it's good sometimes to do stuff for customers, right? Because if you find that people ask for a certain thing more, yeah. more than two or three times, then suddenly you say, hmm, we should uh, stop doing this for customers, and we should start building this into our software. Yeah, there's no doubt. And, and so it is good to get hands-on on occasion, but yeah, you can't scale if you're continually exactly. holding hands and doing stuff like that. And, and please, I do want to, I want to honor the sentiment that you just made, which is, yeah, we work with, I mean, we have, we have, a, we have a much larger than normal support staff team because of our client type. Right. And we're on the phone with them all day long. And our team, and our development and design and support team sit in the same area. I want my developers to see the tears in my support team's face. It's very important to the process. So your point is well taken. You need to be there. You need to work with the customer. Agreed. Yeah, totally. Actually, we all do support here. So every, every single person is required to do support. Oh, I like that. I like that stuff. Uh, yeah. So if you want to know how the pain the customer is feeling at, at, on site at the start of an event, you know, you guess what? You'll, you'll get it by email or by phone. Perfect. So, and you I can like make that. sure that that gets fixed. So. I like that. I like that. Cool. Love it. All right. So Ben, I know you've been very gracious with your time. We're going on 40 some odd minutes. If there's anything that you could, obviously we'll, we'll get your contact details in just a moment, but is there anything that you want our audience to, to take away from this uh, discussion that, that I failed to ask you? <laughs> no, you know, John, I think we covered it. Uh, look, you know, um, we're trying something special here. And I, I think your audience, you know, I, I love your audience. I love your publication. I love, I love what you push out here. Um, and I, it's really exciting to be part of it because uh, in my mind, 
These are the people who are creating experiences of the most important type. These are gatherings, you know? This is community building 101. Um, and uh, so I'm, I'm excited to be part of it. And I guess I would just kind of conclude by saying that, you know, my mission is to make our lives as a collective easier. And uh, we're gonna keep on working on it. It's been, it's been, it's tough. We got a lot, our jobs are tough. And uh, we're gonna do our best to make that, make that easier as we move forward. A Amen to that. Yeah, man. All right, Ben. So if people want to reach out and thank you for joining me today, yeah. how can they do that? Uh, so I'm, I'm very much on Twitter at Benny.Events. That's the best way to get in touch with me. Hit me at Benny.Events. Um, or, uh, yeah, or really just use Splash. Uh, I'm Ben at Splash that. Um, but I'll tell you, I'm much more responsive on Twitter than even on email. So Benny.Events is a great way to get in touch with me. Um, yeah, man. And then let me know. If you guys have any issues with the product, any ideas, any feedback, any bugs, you let us know. We'll, we'll be on it. Yes, yes. It's always, uh, and believe me, when people, when people you know, have good ideas, they, they want to be heard. So don't be surprised Perfect. if you, you get a few emails from, I would love it. I would from love this it. post. Excellent. Well, Ben, thank you for joining me. Uh, I just want to say that uh, this has been a great discussion. So thanks so much. I have a feeling that this will be the, uh, you know, equal to, if not better than, uh, in terms of page views and, and listen uh, to the than our last discussion. So, so well, thanks. I hope to see you next year then. We'll, we'll, we'll get another one on the books and, uh, we'll see what we're looking like next year. Cool. Awesome. Sounds good. Great, John. Thank you. All right. So for everyone, this has been John Federico with Ben Hindman, uh, CEO and co-founder of Splash. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time. The Event Tech Podcast is brought to you by Event Hero. All of the event management software features in the world are worthless if they don't easily integrate with your registration system and other systems you need to make your event happen the way you want it to. Stop making superhuman effort and start using your superpowers. Event Hero provides features you need, like check-ins, lead retrieval, analytics, and alerts, all seamlessly integrated with your favorite registration system and other back-end tools. To learn more and to get started, visit eventhero.io. Thank you.